So hopefully by now we we kind of have an understanding of leukocytes and what they do in inflammation and in the in and in the immune response to invaders. Um, just to recap, you have a blood vessel and you have a leukocyte. The leukocyte will um, margin. It's called marginization, where it will let me, let me draw a bigger a bigger blood vessel. But you have a white blood cell or a leukocyte here. During the process of marginization, it mar it comes to or, or approaches the margin of the blood vessel and then it kind of slows down why it, why it is it attaching to all these proteins and then it will diapedes that's the word diapedesis it will squeeze out between the endothelial cells the these are endothelial cells or blood vessel cells that are at the at, that make up um, that make up the blood vessel they're all around here on the outside They'll squeeze out here, and they will uh, go to the. They'll find their way to the bacteria, or whatever the problem is. This is the problem that needs to be resolved: um, necrosis, um, infection, whatever. And this is called chemotaxis. It follows chemicals like a dog sniffing out drugs. It will follow. It will follow that down to the problem, and if it's a bacteria or whatever, it will phagocytize. Now this is this cell; it's kind of coming out. So let's draw a bigger cell here, nucleus. It will create pseudopods, and it will ingest this bacteria, and then it will lysosomes will fuse to this bacteria's membrane and destroy the bacteria. So this whole process of leukocytes um, you know getting out of the bloodstream and getting into the tissues and you know eating up and resolving the problems there if there's defects in the leukocyte function then you can have pathologies. And these are four path four pathologies that are um, that happen when there's defects in leukocyte function. The first one, leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 or LAD1 disease is there's problems with um, these there's little receptors on here. There's problems with these receptors where they don't adhere. They can't attach to the endothelial wall very well and if it does get out it can't undergo chemotaxis and you know that's the leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 1 disease so it's just a problem with it attaching to the cell wall and when it gets out it can't perform all of its functions that it's designed to do um, leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2 is kind of the same thing where you have some kind of adhesion deficiency and in this one, you can't um, fructose. You can't metabolize fructose very well. And fructose, you need fructose to create um, these oligosaccharides that are on this uh, leukocyte. So it just remember that there was selectins. I don't know if you remember, but watch the previous videos to remind you that there were selectins. There was a E type and a P type, and these oligosaccharides attached to these selectin molecules, which kind of help it adhere to this um, cell wall and slow it down, and then help with margin or uh, diapedesis. So that's that leukocyte adhesion deficiency type 2. And this type 2 is less severe than, than the type 1. And these are immunodeficiency. Um, you can also class, uh, classify these as immunodeficiency. With uh, chronic granulomatous disease, remember with uh, chronic granulomatomous disease is Remember how these lysosomes, let me scroll down here a little bit. 
these lysosomes create um, reactive, reactive oxygen species, these free radicals. This is a free radical. Um, these free radicals that will fuse with this uh, bacteria enzyme, or sorry, this bacteria cell, and it will just chew, up, chew it up and destroy all of its machinery and everything. The, this uh, chronic gran granulot man, I have a hard time saying this word, but um, this disease it has um, it, it it has a problem with these reactive um, oxygen species. It has a problem with creating these. So what you see inside the cell is let me uh, just scroll over here. When you have a leukocyte and you have a bacteria inside of here what you see is you have these lysosomes that kind of form a granule if you will or granuloma as they call them because they're kind of forming around them because they don't have these reactive oxygen species uh, molecules to destroy this bacteria so they kind of form a shell if you will around this bacteria as if you know they're they're doing what they're supposed to they're here but they just don't have this reactive oxygen species to destroy the bacteria so they kind of form a, sh uh, a sphere or a shield around it and those are called granulomas inside the cell you can see those and the last word or the last uh, syndrome is Shadiak Higashi syndrome. And this syndrome is an interesting one. Kind of in the same, let me just draw this arrow clear over here because we're going to have to use this diagram too. So here's the nucleus. And let's just say this cell engulfed another bacteria. And let's just say you have lysosomes here. These are lysosomes. And remember inside the cell there's a cytoskeleton and there's little little tracks, if you will, that kind of help stabilize this uh this cell to kind of give it its 3D its 3D shape. Well, these lysosomes, there's little molecules kind of like trucks that pick up these lysosomes and they travel up these tracks to f to fuse to attach them to these bacteria these little these you know so that's how that's how that process happens is these lysosomes get carried by a molecule a little molecule that kind of is like a, acts as a truck and will carry or transport these molecules along these um, cytoskeleton structures to this bacteria so then that these can kind of fuse. So this this syndrome oh sorry so in the case of this syndrome um, these lysosomes cannot travel along these tracks to get to the bacteria so you, to destroy it or whatever it phagos, phagocytizes. So that is um, Shadik Hikashi syndrome. All right, so now we're going to talk about another subject here. So what are the outcomes of inflammation? Well, there's three main uh, outcomes of inflammation. You can have resolution, you can have progression to chronic inflammation, or you can have scarring or fibrosis. During the resolution of um, of of inflammation if the if, if the damage to the tissues wasn't severe enough and if the tissues that were damaged like the cells that died if they can be replaced then they will and then the tissue will return to its kind of its normal state and function um part of that resolution is the termination of acute inflammatory um, markers or you know the steps that we went through so you know all the all the chemo chemokines all the you know as this you know as this cell is fighting it will produce 
that you know uh, little substances chemical substances as the bacteria is there or whatever it will also produce little substance all of those will be reabsorbed um, remember that the blood vessel um, sorry, the blood vessel has little holes in it the endothelium it becomes more porous vascular permeability well these holes will disappear that's part of the termination of the acute inflammatory uh, markers or process. Another thing that will happen is the neutrophils um, or the leukocytes that kind of came out, um, diapedesis, you know, happened and they, they came out of the, the vessels. What they'll go is they'll undergo apoptosis because you can't have too, you know, the body doesn't like to have too many of these neutrophils out in the extracellular matrix. They, you know, likes to keep control of these, so they'll undergo apoptosis if there's too many of them out there. Um, there are some out there all the time, but if there's too many, they'll undergo apoptosis and die. So all of these little processes that that happened will kind of come to an end. And another thing too is that these leukocytes, what they'll do is they'll produce chemicals that um, inhibit, that inhibit inflammation. So these these neutrophils or these leukocytes will inhibit inflammation. They'll send out little chemicals that will inhibit the whole inflammation process and cascade. If uh, the process, if the damaged tissues or cells, um, like if the bacteria is sticking around for a long time and, and the body just cannot seem to fight it, it will promote chronic inflammation. And we're going to talk about next in the next few videos what is chronic inflammation and how is that different from acute inflammation. But pretty much the the whole process that we talked about of acute acute inflammation um, acute inflammation it just continues it just continues on and on and on and on so and in the case of autoimmune diseases like some of these uh, rheumatoid arthritis um, SLE these other autoimmune diseases Um, they'll just they'll just continue uh, uh, chronic inflammation occurs and last but not least if you have um, if the tissues cannot be regenerated cannot be fixed then you'll have scarring and fibrosis and what happens is there's a, a cell type called fibroblasts and if you know the the cell structures like this and it gets repaired or it gets damaged or it, it gets damaged and it can't the body can't really figure out how it to put itself back together um, then you know these fibroblasts will come in here and they'll just lay down connective tissue connective tissue to kind of help stabilize stabilize the area and abscesses can also form if there are a lot of neutrophils or a lot of leukocytes or if there's certain bacteria or certain viruses um, they they are they refer to pyogenic pyogenic and power refers to pus so they're pus producing so they'll start producing pus and that's how we get abscesses and usually abscesses um, start destroying the tissue um, obviously in that area so that can lead to scarring and fibrosis and we'll talk more about scarring and fibrosis and the whole process that is involved in that so we'll see you in the next video